No, we're on. You said in five minutes we're going to start. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Holy Spirit, we praise you. We welcome you to this place this morning. <laughs> You're a good God. And we love you. Good morning, and we are live for the first time in 2021. Good morning. Good morning. It's exciting to be back. We never really went anywhere, <laughs> and that's a good thing. Uh, before I start this morning, there's just a few things that the Lord's put on my heart, and I'm going to share them with you. Um, that's me talking on something. Well, I think we fixed it. 
I was going to say it's the sound of an angel, <laughs> but that would be pushing it. <laughs> oh, audio visual. <laughs> Technical difficulties. I'm, I'm learning very slow, but I'm getting it. All right, so I woke up the other morning, and I felt like the Lord said to me, um, there are some people that are still tired. And I was like, okay. And he said, so tell them that they're to continue resting until they're not. The very next day, um, I had a chat with someone, and they said, you know, oh, even after the holidays, and they said, I'm still tired. Now, if that isn't confirmation from the Holy Spirit, I don't know what it is. So I was able to share with them that God said to still rest. I know we've started a new year. But you know what we need to know is that God does not do time. <gasps> he created time, but he does not do time. He doesn't function in the same realm of time as we do. He does suddenly. <laughs> he does completely. He does in his time. But you don't have to go like, oh, I need to get going. I need the new year, and I need to be doing all of this stuff. If you're tired, rest. Let me just ask you this. If you're hungry, what do you do? Eat. eat. <laughs> Nobody seems to need to give us permission to eat, but we seem to need permission to rest. So the Lord has given you permission if you've come out of last year and, and you still need some recuperation time to please take it. He's not like going, oh, it's the beginning of the year. Get with me. Because he's a good God and he loves us. He's a good God, and he loves us. And the other thing, just a little portion of a verse that came to me this morning, um, even after I got to the, to the building today, he, he will perfect that which concerns me. And there are some things that are not. Perfect means mature, complete, finished. It doesn't mean perfect. It means to make it mature. And there are some things that, that I, I just sent somebody. It's just like, oh, it's that time pressure again. I have to start. I have to go. I have to do that. But it's not ready yet. So just wait until it's ready, until it's mature, and then step into it. And, and uh, he is, pr in the meantime, sit comfortable and relax that God is finishing what needs to be prepped. Amen. 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 I do not often come up with sermon titles. <laughs> I'm really bad at it. And I came up with one this year. And uh, Brent's like, oh, we're running around trying to get all the new stuff going. I'm going, you didn't put my sermon title on. <laughs> this is it. How to have the year God wants you to have. Oh, so glad I'm listening, so glad I came to church today. And I want to say this. I want you to, like, you know, save this on your phone. And if any time in the next 365 days you hear someone saying, this year is just not going very well, I want you to send them the message and say, you should come to my church. <laughs> because God loves us. He cares deeply and passionately about each one of us and about the details of our lives, and he wants us to have a good year. The year that he wants for us is better than the year that we want for ourselves because he's God. And, and he tells us to ask abundantly above and beyond what we could even think when we're asking him for things. So although this is about how the year God wants you to have, we actually have to do certain things to get that. And so that's what we're going to talk about. I'm going to start this morning. I'm going to read a few passages from Philippians. And then I'm going to, to move into a little bit of some prophetic things that have been, been coming. And all of it in case is this. But we're going to start with the Word of God. In Philippians 4, it says, Do not fret or have anxiety about anything. We, you know, before we even got to, I don't know of a year in my life where people were fretting about the next year before it came, until this one. What's 2021 going to be like? Well, it depends if you do it the way God wants it, or you do it the way you want it, or you do it the way you think the world's telling you to do it. So in order for us to not fret or be anxious, we need to do the rest of the verse. It says, in the, it says this, but in every circumstance, and in everything, 
See, sometimes we think in order for everything to be okay, that we need to not, that everything needs to be okay. But God says, in those circumstances, <coughs> in those things, if you do this, it says by prayer and petition, and petition, by the way, is kind of a legal word. I like that. You take a petition before the court of heaven, and the judge rules on it. And that's what prayer is. It's taking, this is, you go before and you say, this is what I would like. By prayer and petition, definite requests. Oh, I should tell you. I'm reading out of the amplified version. <laughs> definite requests. Sometimes we're like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Okay, maybe you don't, but I maybe once. We're just, we're crying out to the Lord, and he's like, he's waiting for us to tell him. A definite request with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is such a key thing. Because when we thank him for all of the things that we've done, it builds our faith that this is going to be a breeze. Everything's a breeze for God. But this, it, it, it changes how we think. So here's, here's the thing. I was, I've just been reading massively, speed reading through my Bible. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. But I, I was reading about how the Israelites, God had, through the ten plagues, he miraculously delivered them out of Egypt. He had, they had given them an abundance of wealth, so they went out exceedingly rich for being slaves. They took all the wealth of Egypt with them when they left. Miracle. He provided water. He provided manna. He provided quail. He miraculously parted the Red Sea. He'd done all of these things, and then they got to another place in the desert, and they'd run out of water again. And instead of going to Moses and saying, God has done all of these things in the past. Will you petition for him? Could he get us water again? They didn't. They went, it was better for us being slaves in Egypt. We should just go back. And they were ready to kill Moses. It's great being a leader. You know? See, Thanksgiving reminds us of what God's done when we're asking him to do something else. And in, instead of us like, God, why did you allow this to happen? Come on. That comes out of our mouths sometimes. Instead, we're looking for him. What's your miracle going to be this time? Then it says, continue to make your wants known to God. So like, we have permission to ask more than once. Or how about this? Uh, God, I kind of had a bad attitude that day. I'd like to refine my prayer a little. <laughs> or as we spend time in his presence, we start to look at things differently. And it's like, oh, you know what? Um, maybe what I was asking for was less than or not your best. So how about this? Continue to make your requests known to God. Oh, and, and then it says, this is the thing, and God's peace shall be yours. This isn't man's peace, this, is, this isn't your peace. So we have circumstances and things that we can fret and be anxious about, and then we have God's peace, which I'm gonna describe in a minute. The path to get from one to the other is talking to God. And we're going to, I'm gonna to talk to you about how to talk to God in a few minutes here. It says, God's peace shall be yours, that tranquil state. I know, I think Avon came out with a perfume called tranquil. It's such a great word. Tranquil. <sighs> spa. Some of you need to spend time in a spiritual spa. Mm. That was a prophetic word. <laughs> That tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. So here, if you want to have the year that God wants you to have, you need to be saved. You need to be born again. You need to give your life to Christ and let him give you the year. It's this conundrum, oxymoron kind of thing. It's like it, Jesus said, if you want to keep your life, you have to lose it. Lose it to me. I'll give it back to you better than you could ever do it without me. But if you hang on to it, he said you'll lose it in the end. Gives us a choice. So that, that first of all, coming from that place that I'm a child of God and, and I can sit in tranquility. 
And then the next says, it says, so fearing nothing from God. So I'm good with God. I'm good with God. I'm on his side. It's never he's on my side. Are we on his side? Where's God standing in the world today? What does he want in the world today? Mm. I don't fear anything from God. And being content with its earthly lot. That doesn't mean that, you know, if you have an opportunity to make something better that you wouldn't. It's just being wherever you are in the moment that you're content. Now, I have mentioned a few times in the past few months that I've been listening to uh, this woman on the Elijah list called Kat Kerr. And God has taken her to heaven. She quit counting over a thousand times from the time she was a little girl. She has a really unique call on her life. And she has, she's, she's sharing and answering people's questions. They write in. A lot of people ask the same one. And they ask questions about heaven and this. And do you know about this? And what? Because you see things from heaven. And as I've been listening to her talk about heaven, because we don't really know what it's like. So we think earth is better. Yes, we do. If you don't know what something else is like, you can have that thing of like, oh, you know, we could be all worried about our homes and our house. Man, she starts talking about your mansions and things, the way things are like in heaven. And I'm like, do I even want to put any money into this? <laughs> yes, but not excessive because, I mean, I am here for like such, it's, everything changes. Your priorities and your concerns change. The more we know about heaven, the less we lose our peace over <laughs> earthly things. So he said, that peace, which transcends all understanding. I'm going to go back because we've lost a little bit of the flow. Make your definite requests known with thanksgiving. And God's peace shall be yours, that tranquil state of a soul, assured of its salvation through Christ, and so fearing nothing from God, and being content with its earthly lot, that peace which transcends all understanding. That means it's way above understanding, which means if we don't have understanding, it's okay. My grandson goes to me, I'll start to explain, I get it, I get it, Grandma. You know, I was smart enough, I caught on early, you don't have to finish your sentence. I get it. When we get it, we're a little, we can, we're at peace. Okay, I get it, I understand. God says, you can, my peace, you don't have to understand a thing. And boy, do we like to understand. Understanding things makes us feel in control. We're not necessarily in control, but it makes us think we're in control. That, it transcends all understanding. And then it goes on. It says, shall garrison and mount guard. Now, that's battle terminology. Think of Fort Knox. Think of this huge wall that goes up and over, and nothing can get through. See, when we have that kind of peace, in our, that all the circumstances are out there. All that stuff's going on out there, but it can't get through this wall of peace that God has given me. Even though I don't understand anything, it will mount guard over our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Now, I don't know how you want to go through this year, but I like to go through this year with this huge, well, I'm thinking like 10 feet thick on the bottom, garrison of peace over my whole life that in these circumstances, because I've prayed and petitioned the Lord, and you just sit back while you're waiting for the answers to come. Now, that's part one. It goes on to say, for the rest of things, whatsoever is true. I mean, you have to have a little talk here. Because I didn't bring my phone this morning, but I was gonna hold it up. Because <laughs> this is where we get our truth from but we're getting snippets of things. We're getting half conversations. We're getting half sentences. We're getting edited sentences put together, depending on whoever is putting the message out, what they want us to hear and believe. And even this, even if everything, we understood everything and knew all the details, it's still not true if we're not looking at it from God's perspective. 
Because we can look at something and say, oh, it's this, this, and this. Oh, it's this. And God says, well, actually, it's this. So whatsoever is true, whatsoever is worthy of reverence, is just, is pure, is lovely and lo lovable, whatsoever is kind, kind, winsome and gracious. If there's any virtue, oh, Lord, the world is kind of lacking virtue lately. If there's anything excellent, if there's anything worthy of praise, now take all of those things, just kind of take them and write them on a little notepad and put your phone beside it. <laughs> How many things have I looked at this year that met that criteria? Daily inundated my mind with. Because God says these things, think on those things, weigh those things, tank, take account of those things. Fix your mind on them. We are fixing our mind on things that are the exact opposite of all of these. And then we go, I don't know why I'm so afraid and fearful for 2021. Our mind is designed by God to fixate on things. He designed it that way so that we would fixate on his word. But whatever we predominantly put in is what, is what when you go to bed at night, you start thinking about things. And we might, you know, that last show you watch starts replaying in your mind. Only me. <laughs> yeah. Or but the, the more that we have going over, you know, that's what you fixated on all day. Fear and anxiety indicate that we're focusing on the wrong things. Because according to God, according to those scriptures I read, it doesn't matter what those things are. We don't have to be fearful or anxious, even if, if all those things are going on. So that, that's the beginning of it. We need to pray, and we need to think on the right things. If you want to have the year that God wants you to have, you need to pray, and you need to think on the right things. Now here, everything that I'm going to say from now on is, is based on this truth. The majority of our battles are spiritual battles, but they manifest and they're visible in the natural realm. When you don't understand that, then everything that comes at you, everything that you, that you encounter, you can think it's people. It's people. If those people would just change, wouldn't say that, wouldn't do that. It's not about people. It's a spiritual battle. It's manifesting in the natural realm. It's visible. It shows up. But the root of it is a spiritual thing. So here's Philippians 1 verse 28. It says, Do not for a moment be frightened or intimidated in anything. Why is that important? Because in the spirit realm, such fearlessness will be a clear sign and proof to your adversaries that aren't people. They're spiritual entities. It will be proof to them because they're watching you and they're listening to what comes out of your mouth. It will be proof of their impending destruction and doom. In other words, they're over here watching Charlene and going like, man, nothing makes that girl afraid. Well, you know what? Fear comes at all of us. And you have a window of time between when you feel it, experience, think it, and before you react. And if when the very first thing that fear comes at you, if you just say, God, I know this isn't making you afraid. Start with that. Because, like, I'm feeling fear. Don't be kidding yourself. We all feel fear. But I'll just, I'll just start with that. God, this didn't make it. This didn't even fluster. You saw this coming because you know the end from the beginning. You know how the story ends. So you're not afraid. And you already have a solution for this. I'm going to spend some time with you and get the solution. I'm going to, I'm going to get your strategy for this circumstance and for this situation. But if you, could, you, if you shut it off before it can take root in your life, then they're watching going, well, that was a waste of time. And the Bible talks about assignments from the enemy falling lifeless to the ground. They don't accomplish what he sent them to do. 
So I'm not saying fake it till you make it. But, you know, God's into drama. So just play the part of this is who I am in the spirit. And eventually your flesh and your mind will catch up. Amen? Amen? Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they're watching. And so is the angelic realm. And so is God. Because it says, and on the other side, it's evidence of your deliverance and salvation from God. Did anybody notice any legal words there? Proof and evidence? Mm -hmm. See, just by standing and saying, I'm not going to fear this. It wants me to be afraid. In the natural, there would be reason to be afraid. But I'm not going to be afraid. You have put evidence on the on the docket for God to look at. Okay, I can I can work with that, he says. Legal. Because it's not a spiritual battle. So now, 2021. Are you ready? Okay. I kind of have two points and then some points. <laughs> 2021 is 2021. <laughs> mm. That's a synonym, like pair, pair, and pair. I have a pair of pairs, and I'm going to pair them. It's not 21, it's 20 W-O-N. Mm -hmm. I won. It's, do you notice that's past tense? Because Jesus, he won, when he said it's finished, yeah. it's finished. Mm -hmm. 2021. One is a victory word. Victory is a battle word. Mm -hmm. Oh, yay. Keep listening. Because did I mention we won? Okay, here's, here's the, the key point of everything. If you've not read your Bible and you're not continuing to stay immersed in the Word, it's going to be more difficult for you to win. Because Jesus won it, but we have to take it. We have to go in and take the spoils. But battles are not won by power, which is a good thing. They are won by authority. Because we're not talking natural realm. We're talking spirit realm. And when it changes in the spirit realm, it manifests differently in the, in the natural realm. And the victory shows up and everybody goes, oh, that was awesome. But something happened in the spirit realm first. God's word has authority over everything else. So if you need to have authority over a circumstance or a thing in your life, the only word that's going to have authority over it is God's. So if you don't know what it is, you don't have any authority on your own. I'm just telling you the truth so that you know. We are those preachers that harp at you at the beginning of every year. Are we not? Mm -hmm. What do we tell you? Read your Bible. Read your Bible. I'll tell you about kind of what God did. I thought it was me. Turned out it was God. I, I read my Bible differently all the time. And one particular year, and boy, there was, there was time to do it. He, he told me to read through it four times. So every three months, I had to read through the Bible. It was about an hour a day. I was like, I know. You do not want to get behind. And then I got really close. Remember the last few days, and I'm like, God, I don't think I'm going to make it. And he said, Charlene, it, it, you know, I'm not sitting there at, at December 31st at midnight going, oh, you failed. You were three pages left or three chapters or whatever, you know, left from reading it through four times. Chill, girl. Okay, God is not a hard taskmaster. But I, I'm fasting in the first 21 days of this month and of uh, this year, and, and I, I was just like, God, you know, uh, last year was a really, really different year, and I, said, I, want, I, I just kind of feel like I would like to read through my Bible in 21 days. <laughs> so then I took a, picked a Bible, not the Amplified, <laughs> not the Amplified, and I took the number of pages and divided it by 21, and it's like, okay, that's about 100 pages a day. God, you do not want to get behind. You don't want to skip a day. I actually started, can I get ahead? Can I get ahead a little? Because some days are fuller than others. Yeah. 
But you know what? I, I, I'm going to talk about what happened, a key point of it, in a minute, because as I read it like that, and okay, I'm really blessed. The Lord has blessed me with the ability to read really quickly. Okay, so stop comparing. Don't ever compare yourself to anybody else, right? And, and you know, okay, so I'm not watching TV or, and I'm not on Facebook. I actually have quite a bit of time left over after I'm done reading. Oh, we have time to read the Word of God. A lot. We just might have to not do other things. So, you know, whatever. Yeah, okay. God's Word has authority over everything else. We will need to discipline ourselves daily so that the Word of God dominates our thinking. A year is made up of Okay, this is really profound. 365 days. You win the year by winning each day one at a time. Okay? You dominate the thoughts from the enemy, the thoughts from the world, with, with God's thoughts one day at a time. And then when our eyes and then our emotions from all the stuff we're looking at want to control us, the essential thing to do, what we must do, is we must say, this is what is coming at me, but what I see is going to come under the domination or the dominion of the Word of God. And we have to do it every day. And depending on what's going on, we may have to do it more than once a day. There's the odd time. I know, I, I know you're all the same as me. Something will happen and it will, whoa, you know, and it's, it's disturbing. And we find ourselves thinking about how we're going to fix that. Anybody? Just me? Oh, if I said this, oh, I could do this, oh, I could have this conversation. Oh, I could go, you know, da, da, da. And then it's like, oh, no, Lord. Okay, God. Mm. And, we say, and we say, you know, Lord, this. And then five minutes later, we're thinking about how we're going to fix the situation. Anybody? Sure. See? So, not just daily, but sometimes more than once. We need to, if we're going to win, and God wants us to win, because he won it already, we need to understand that God's authority, word has authority over everything, and we need to, we need to speak it to the situations. And that takes me to 2021 is about the tongue. Because there was like a lot of wagging last year. We had wagging. Oh my goodness. We had wagging tongues. Our tongues were wagging. Right? But the, the key for this year is the tongue. God has given mankind dominion over the earth. When he created the earth, he said to Adam and Eve, it's yours, rule it, run the place. Satan came and stole it. Jesus came and defeated him. So although that was on a corporate basis, now on an individual basis, if we give our lives to Christ and we step into unity with him, we have dominion because we're with him. We have stepped out from under the devil's dominion and into the kingdom of God, and we now have dominion over the devil, which means we have dominion over our world. I have dominion over my world. Yeah. But see, not everybody's functioning that way. So that's why there's all this mess in the world. But God has given, once you give your life to Christ, you have dominion. That's one of the things that happens. You get dominion back. You may not live like it. Nobody may have ever told you that, but it's true. That's why he came, to put things back. So, he gave us dominion. So he's waiting respectfully for us to invite him in to intervene in our situation. That's called prayer. Now, 1 Peter 5, 6 is the key. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Oh, I know that verse. And sometimes we think, okay, oh, God is so awesome, and I, I need to be humble, I need to worship, I need to, you know, bow down, I need to humble myself under God, and then, you know, he's going to raise us up and seat us in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. All of that is true. 
But if you look at the verse from this perspective, that when we hit whatever we hit, or it hits us, that we turn around and we ask for help. Do you know that pride doesn't want to ask for help? I can do this. I can do it myself. There's even a kid's book. I can do it myself, which is good. We want our kids to learn how to dress themselves and tie their shoes. Right? God wants us to learn how to do things by, by ourselves, but with him. Right? He wants us to grow up. It's very biblical. But what it looks like to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God so that he can lift us up over top of our circumstances is we need to cast our cares on him. That's saying, God, I can't change this. I, I don't even know all the details. Oh, give me a break. That is not how we live. We look at something, it's like, okay, I've got this. And okay, I've checked it all out. Okay, I know everything there is to do, and now I'm going to act. And then it doesn't get fixed, and then we go, oh, God! Well, he could have saved us a few days. And a lot of stress. Yes. So, step two. What does it look like when we cast our cares on him? It's like, okay, God, it's all yours now. Let me know when you fixed it. Oh, I'll figure it out because everything will be okay. God loves to do stuff with us. You know, I'm, I'm kind of, that's a characteristic of God that, that really resonates in my life. It's like, yes, I could do it on my, on my own by myself, but, but if you come and do it with me, we can talk. I'm like, ah! Because <laughs> my relational thing is like hitting the top of the charts, if you've ever seen it. I'm like, and it's like, and why have one other person if we could have three or four or five or ten and have a party? <laughs> Yay! Let's do this together! And it's like one person's worth of work. <laughs> and it takes longer because you visit. But it's fun. God likes to have fun. But he loves us. He wants to do stuff with us. So we invite him to intervene. Okay, God, here's the situation. I invite you in. You've given me dominion. In my dominion, I draw on you. We have resources. God's our number one resource. So as I rule over this situation, I'm going to humble myself and say, what are you seeing up there that I'm not seeing down here? What do you know that I don't know? Do you know there's the odd thing? God just says, just ignore that. It's going to go away. Oh, <gasps> talk about having a rest. Like, I don't even know, God's got, no, that's just to distract you, get your old, get your panties in a knot. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> okay. It's like, come on, we do. I'm just like, and then God, and it comes to nothing. It's like, well, I just really got, I just wasted energy and focus. So when we pray and declare God's word, over any situation, we give God permission to act. See, we can't just say, okay, God, come and deal with this. How we invite him in is through his word. The Bible says in Luke 1 no word, no word, no word, no word spoken by God is without power. Do you know what the, do you know what the context of that is? The angel shows up at Mary's house, and he says, you're going to have a baby. And she says, okay. And he says, she goes, how's that going to happen? And he said, the Holy Spirit's going to overshadow you, and you will conceive, and you'll bring forth a son. His name will be Jesus, and he's going to save the whole world. And Mary says, be it done unto me as according to your word. Whose word? He was bringing a message from somebody. Whose word was it? God's. So, and, and then it says, for no word spoken by God is without power. So you get in your situation and, 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 and you know, God's getting it. She could have gone, yeah, well, okay, like, I'll wait and see. Okay, will I notice anything? I guess. Then I guess it's true once I see the proof. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh something's kicking in there. 
Wouldn't have happened. See, she, God said, she, she listened, and then she said what God said. And, and then it happened. We need to agree with and speak what God is saying about every situation in, in 2021. Every situation. Isaiah 55 says this, So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. This is God. And, and the Bible describes it like it's a sword. Actually, it says it's a sword, two-edged, cuts both ways. It shall not return to me void. In other words, God sends his word out and it comes back to him. It's reusable. Talk about environmentally friendly. <laughs> It shall not return to me void without producing any effect. His word is going to have an effect. It shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the thing that I sent it to do. I, I, we have all said, could you go do this for me? And the person does it and comes back. Words have assignments. They go do their assignment. God's word ha has assignments. They have creative power in them. That's how he created the world, through words. And they produce in the spirit realm, and then it shows up and manifests in the natural realm. Here's our conundrum. We can't speak what we don't know. Oh man, I should have read my Bible more. Yes, it comes in handy. By the way, every word of God, when that angel showed up, like it's in the Bible now, because it got written down, but that was a prophetic word from God, correct? So prophetic words count. We tend to do that if it's not written down, well, okay, God, I'll just wait and see if that happens. If that's really God, it'll happen. Instead of saying, God, I, I believe in faith that this word's from you. And I declare, I'm going to line up. Is there anything I need to do and change in my life to make that happen? Is there anything I need to stop doing? Oh, cool. Wait, here, okay. I want you to hang on. Put your seatbelt on so you don't get ejected from the car when I say this next statement. We don't have any power in the spirit realm. We have none. You know the story, okay, maybe you don't, but it's in Acts, I think the book of Acts chapter 7. Um, Paul cast demons out. By the way, we, we in, in this church, we minister and pray for people, we cast out demons. Because Jesus said, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. People that are really tormented, if you want to get delivered, we will minister deliverance to you. It's, but, but Paul was doing that, he was, he was ministering. And, and some people saw them. They were, they were church people. They were church people. And they came upon this man uh, that uh, really needed deliverance. And there were seven of them. And they addressed the demons in the man. And they said, um, we, we adjure you in, in, the, in the name of the Lord who Paul serves, or something like that, yeah. come out. They came out. I don't know how many demons there were. But there were seven sons of Sceva, there were seven men. And even if there was that one demon, it, he ripped their clothes off. And they went running. We don't have power in the spirit realm. The enemy does. Hang on, because I'm getting to what we do have. But his power is depleting. You know how you plug in and you charge up? Like we have this little speaker, we listen to music. If it's not connected to the source, what happens to it? It depletes, it runs down. In the spirit realm, once Satan and, and the angels that went with him were e ejected out of heaven and they're no longer in contact with God, they have been slowly losing their power. Did you know that? Hmm. How does that make you feel right now? Hmm. They are constantly... Do you want to know why they do all those stupid things? Like, well, it's not stupid because it, it, they sacrifice animals and drink blood because it feeds the power in the spirit realm. That's not like, you know, whatever theory, what's that word that's flying around? Conspiracy, that's not a conspiracy theory. Oh, they do, they've been doing that for years. You read the Old Testament. They sacrificed the blood of their babies. Poured out on the altar, they won battles. 
See, because they need to keep being fed. But God is all-powerful. It comes from him. It's who he is. He doesn't lose any. But Satan and all his hordes are gradually getting depleted. So the only thing they do have is deception. Oh, gee, that, I think that ties into what she was talking about with the mind. Yes. Now, we don't have any power over the enemy because we don't need to have power over the enemy. We have authority over the enemy because, number one, of our relationship with God. If you've not given your life to Christ, I implore you, give your life to Jesus. You want to be in God's kingdom. If you're going to be connected to anything spiritually, be connected to God. You can be connected to all kinds of things in the spirit realm through all kinds of ways, but the only way to connect through God, to God is through Jesus. And just say, God, here's my life. I give it to you. I, I want to get out of darkness. I want to get out of my sin. I mean, just talk to him. He knows your heart. Say, I'm giving you my life today. Because if you don't, you are under control of darkness, of Satan's dominion. You, have, you may not realize it, but you are. And you have no power over him. Now, when we move into God's kingdom, we don't have any power over him either. We have authority. And our authority is God's word. Oh, I think I should read my Bible. Yes, you should. Now, here's the parameters. Because it's like, okay, does this work everywhere all the time for everything? Inquiring minds want to know. I was telling you how he's cruising through my Bible. So I'm, I'm on track so far. <laughs> and I have discovered something. Because, you, you know, the odd verse might stick in your mind. You know, Psalm 2, he sits in the heavens and he laughs. You know, the nations are in an uproar. And it's like, oh, yeah. You know, and, and you might know the odd story. But when you start reading through and you read it through really quickly, it is incredibly apparent that God, from the beginning of when they were first formed, has dealt with nations as a whole. I don't care, and we are, we are more aware of nations now because uh, of our ability, because of the internet and because of Facebook, because of, and we can know, when I grew up, we never knew what was happening if, that, if it wasn't happening in Canada. We hardly knew what was happening in the States. Nobody knew what was going on outside their backyard, let alone what you had for supper last night. I know that now because you posted a picture. We know what's going on. We don't know everything that's going on, but we have the ability to, to know what's going on in nations, and it is frightening to us. It's frightening to know what's going on in our nation. God deals with nations, like complete nations, and in a moment, in an hour. With Egypt, he, he toyed with them for a while with the plagues. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to make a little show here. Like, and, then they're, they're, and then he just topped it off, the cherry on the cake with the Red Sea. Just totally wiped out their entire army in a matter of minutes. An entire nation's army. Yes, the nation was smaller. God's still bigger. God can do and deal with a nation in a moment. And he's going to. He's going to. I, I've spoken, I don't know if it was a prayer or a number of really, really early on in the year about what was going on in Hungary and how they were honoring God, the Hungarian government, and they were allowing people to make their choices, but they were rewarding choices that honored God. But you're free to do whatever you want. And we're going to do this, and we're saying no to this and yes to this. There are now three countries in Europe, Hungary and two others, that are together are saying, we would like righteousness and justice in our, in our nation. That's within a year, two other nations have flipped to righteousness and justice. God, from the beginning of time, continuously deals with nations. Say, okay, he's there for the big things. <sighs> Y'all know we get up in the morning, we have our espresso, look out our back window, have our little couple time. In the summer, not so much in the winter, those silly little birds 
all of a sudden, thing, and it's like they hit the window. It's like, hello, but if the sun's not shining, they don't know it's there. The big birds tend to miss it. And then, so then you look down, it's like, is it moving? I don't know. <laughs> is it going to be God heal the bird? Maybe I should practice raising the dead on the birds. And I'm like, I'm thinking. Sometimes you look later, and it's like it's flopping a little weight. It's like, I think it's going to make it, honey. And then you go back later, and it's gone, and you don't know whether the cats that are in the neighborhood got it or whether it flew away. The Bible says, a sparrow does not fall to the earth without him seeing it. Nothing is too small or beneath him in our lives. He cares for us. In conjunction with number one and number two, to get through this year, you're going to have to stand. You're going to have to brace yourself and stand. The context of that is Ephesians 6, and before he tells us to stand, he says, suit up, buddy. You've got to put your armor on. And, the, and he says, put the whole armor of God on, but above all, the most important one, take the shield of faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. What's that? Oh, she wants me to read my Bible. Yes, because your shield might be tiny, but your circumstances might need you to have one this big. Take the shield of faith with which you will be able to. The shield, by the way, has to be lifted up. When something's coming at you, a, it's, a dart's coming at you, and you go, I got a shield, but you don't put it between you and the dart, it's not really going to help you. You have to use it. It says you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. The darts are lies. See, it's not the circumstances that are coming and that are happening that are the darts. It's what we believe about them. Whoa. What do you believe about what's happening? Is God in control? Yep. I'm not losing sleep. Or I might be thinking about all this stuff. I'm not losing sleep because many things going on in the world. The darts are things that God isn't saying. And we hold up what God is saying. And when they come against that, they fall to the ground. I suggest that you don't just leave them lying there. You pick it up and you cast it onto God. Cast your cares. God, this is a great conversation starter. God, what are you saying about this? Sometimes we're always like, oh God, help me with this, oh God, you know, we're trying to hear God for something. How about asking him, what, what, what are you thinking? What do you know that I don't know? What do, you, what do you say about this kind of thing? And when you have that mentality, when you go and you read through the Bible, you see what he says really clearly, what he thinks, what is important to him, what he's going to deal with. And when he deals with something, he deals with it completely. The word of God is both offensive and defensive. We stop what's coming at us with the word of God, and then we lob God's word, like sniper bullets or hand grenades, or just pick a, pick a battle for right into the situation. When we do that, when we speak God's word into the situation, in the natural, I can hear my voice, this is a natural thing. In the spirit realm, it releases God and the angels that he assigned to deal with that, to deal with what's going on in the spirit realm. If we don't speak to it, they wait. And then stuff happens and we go, God, where were you? And he goes, I'm right here waiting. Where were you? Watching TV. Okay, Facebook. Another three hours. Whew, that's a big one. But I'm watching, and I am. It's like I'm watching um, sermons or messages. Even, even that there's so much on. You could not possibly, even if you were just 
listening to um, stuff like this message today. I mean, I mean there's more than, than you have hours in a day to listen to of just God stuff. And, and so I'll, sometimes I'll flip through and you can say, and, but God's just like, you got to put it down. You gleaned, now put it down. And no matter what you do, you have to listen to God more than anything else. So we need to speak the word. You can't speak what you don't know. And the last thing we need to do after we invite God in, after we release his word into the situation, after we stand and just don't be moved by it. Remember, look fearless. <clears throat> Drama queen. Oh, but you can do that. If you need to, go into the bathroom and look at your face in the mirror. Say, okay, okay, God, relax that. Smile, good, okay. Get your face in the, practice the pose. I'm not afraid. Okay? The last thing that we must do to have the year that God wants you to do, to have, love people that you don't agree with. <laughs> love you. you don't have to agree with them. By the way, you know, I, 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 with my kids, with my grandkids, you know, you, you don't, you can, sometimes loving them is saying no. You can't do that. But love, love people. There is no law. I don't care what happens, government. There's no law that can stand against the fruit of the Spirit. That's, that's, in, that's in the book, if you've read it. There's no law that can stand against the fruit of the Spirit. So here we go. Stop reacting to things. Analyze. Get the Word of God and respond to it. Dictate what God says. Stay calm. Stay strong. Stay in faith. God's going to do what he's going to do. But it's kind of fun to partner with him instead of panicking. Panicking is really not fun. I've done it. We all have. Partnering with God's way more fun. So if you know somebody that's struggling with 2021, I encourage you to share this with them. And if you have to go back and have a refresher throughout the year, this year is, if you hear, if the, if you hear these words coming out of your mouth, this year is, then you go back and listen to this. I can't believe 2021. Go back and listen to it. Amen. It was a great word, wasn't it? Yeah. Gee, I made you responsible for your own life. Because God has made us all sovereign individuals responsible for our own lives. No, but nothing anybody else does can steal our joy, can make us feel anything. Isn't he a good God? We're not out of control. You're not out of control unless you give it away. And you can take it back. So if you've given control to fear in 2020, and you were waiting to see how 2021 started, and you're still there, I want to I give you permission to let it go. Get, get fear out of the driver's seat of your life. And I'm not just talking about COVID-19. By the way, this, see, this is God. You've got to read your Bible. You'll be so much more at peace. There was a plague that hit Israel. They'd sinned. And there was a nasty plague. I mean, it was wiping out people. Never mind, like, dying. It was wiping out people within hours. People were dropping like flies. And then they went, oh, God, we messed up. They went to Moses and said, what should we do? And Pray to God for us. So Moses prayed to God because they said, we don't want to talk to God. He's scary, so you talk to God and we'll listen to what you say. But they didn't always listen to what he said. But after Jesus, we can talk to God ourselves. We don't, know, we don't need to go between. So Moses prayed and God said, do this. This is how come in, in medical things there's this kind of cross with a snake twirling up. That's from the Bible. Did you know that? He, he put a snake 
on the cross, he defeated the devil. And if they lifted up their eyes and looked at it, how's that for a medical cure? Wherever you put it up high enough that wherever you are, if you look up and you look at that snake on the cross, I mean, it was just a picture. God was doing a prophetic picture of what he was going to do. Healing and salvation. The plague stopped. And nobody else died. Now, when God does something, and I say God does it quickly, right? Okay? Because, like, how's everything we've been doing? Ma mankind's, you know, dealing with this plague. How, how's that been going? Have, have we slowed it down even? Should we maybe pray? What would happen if our government said, yeah, we can't get a grip on this. Um, let's call for a national day of prayer and fasting. Yeah. I just suggesting anyone in government ever hears this. That's, it stopped the plague immediately. See, when you invite God into the situation, Instead of all prideful, we can fix this ourselves. Things change. So, Father, I release a blessed year of obedience as we follow your direction to have the year that you want us to have. God, we can't even begin to imagine how awesome that would be. But we're going to line up with you, and we're going to do it your way. And then we're going to receive all that you have for us. We thank you, God. You're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. Amen. Have a blessed week. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>